Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about Minnie's eye. Now anytime she's in a video, there's at least one or two comments about her eye, which is totally understandable since this is not how a leopard gecko's eye structure should look like. So today I wanted to talk about how this happened, the problems Minnie faces and how we overcome them, and what a vet and a reptile vet said about her eye. So first things first, uh, she was born like this, <laughs> or you know, she hatched out like this. So when I went to get another gecko from the breeder that I bought Gizmo from the previous year, she said she had this gecko that up until a week ago, uh, she would scream at anyone who approached her tank. She was a few weeks old, she had a misshapen eyelid, and she obviously felt very vulnerable. Now the breeder did ask me if I was sure I wanted her, she'd be extra work due to her eye, but I saw this little baby gecko and I was like, of course, and also she's Gizmo's sister, so you know, yeah. So <laughs> you can actually see in this photo of her as a baby, like her weird eyelid and it was kind of stuck together. I also found a very old video that I filmed back in 2007, I think I'd had her a week, I think that's what I say in the video. And if YouTube was around then, this is what the videos of mine would look like. This is Minnie. Uh, and I got her on Saturday, which was the 17th of November. Now, the breeder told me that she'll have trouble shedding around her eye and that I needed to use like a dampened cotton bud or Q-tip to carefully loosen the skin around the eyelid and pull away the skin trapped in the corner of her eye. Now, if you know baby geckos, you know they're skittish. I swear, it was like the day after I got her, she decided to shed. Now, she wasn't tame. She was skittish, she was certainly wary of me, and I had to carefully remove skin from around her eye. <laughs> she did not take well to this. She shook her head, she made that sort of annoyance sound where it's like, eh! And I was a little overwhelmed. She also used to get skin stuck on her tail a lot, so you can imagine just trying to remove skin from a gecko's eye and on their tail on an untamed baby gecko. Like, that was a lot for me when I was 14. But we got through it, and over the years we've developed a good technique for removing any skin trapped in or around her eye. A problem she did face, especially more so when she was younger, was her hunting wasn't the best. So I had Gizmo where I could throw a few crickets in her tank, she'd go wild, she'd go running after them and catch them. And then I had Minnie who would be equally as excited but her aim was terrible. Hence why we developed that little hunting technique I showed in a previous video which I'll link here and below. Like seeing the feedback on that video, seeing that it helped so many of your geckos as well just made me so happy. So if you haven't seen that video make sure you check that out. Anyway, back in the day, so 2007-2008 when she was little, uh, there weren't many leopard gecko resources online. And so when I saw her struggling to catch food, she had this dodgy eye, I wanted to find out more and I wanted to know how I could help her and if she had some eye disease because I was 14 and I'd freak out about everything. Um, and I also wanted to know if there were other geckos out there that had the similar problem. Unfortunately, all I found was a forum that said any geckos with eye problems would probably go blind, they won't be able to hunt and they'll die. Yeah, that's not something you want to hear, also something that's not true, especially for geckos in captivity. Now, wild ones, true, if they have eye problems, they're very, very vulnerable and probably wouldn't survive long. But with some extra care and dedication, as proven by Minnie here, who will be 12 this year, they can definitely survive. Another example is Jessica's animal's friend's gecko, Rago. If you haven't seen her video, I'll link that below. But I will say, like, Minnie's doing well. Like, I will feed her one insect at a time, make sure she's definitely eating. It takes longer than the other geckos. And she's easier, easier to spook, shall I say. And I think it's probably down to her dodgy eye. But what I will say is... It's not a breeze, you know? I've done this for almost 12 years now, so it's kind of normal for me. But I feel like there are some people who get reptiles 
and they can't even be bothered to remove stuck shed from the gecko's toes let alone if they had a gecko like Minnie where they'd have to be very careful and very patient for around her eye area like sometimes I can sit there for 45 minutes or so just carefully doing this um they might not even have the patience to sit there and feed one insect at a time for a baby it'd be every day and it was a lot to take on at 14 but as I said I've been doing this so long now it's just normal for me but I do feel like if 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 there's an owner that really doesn't have the patience for removing stuck shed just from the toes they probably shouldn't have a leopard gecko anyway but they certainly shouldn't have a gecko that has some special requirements because that gecko will just suffer um, if you do have a similar gecko like Minnie you know the struggle but um, I hope you're keeping up with it. I hope you're still like removing that skin or helping them eat because they definitely need it. Now, I would say other than the eye, she is a nice, normal, healthy gecko. She looks a little underweight at the moment because it's at the end of the ovulation season. Um, so she will be putting that weight back on throughout winter. But she is on the skinnier side at the moment. Now, a couple of years ago, probably three years ago now, I did take her to the vet, so she started to develop this white bit over her pupil. Now, the vet didn't know what it was. She did this dye test where she popped a bit of dye in her eye, she looked at it under a certain light, and it basically would show you if there are any sort of damage to the surface of the eye, and thankfully there wasn't any. We got a second opinion from a reptile vet, and he had said that, like, you can kind of see that her eye sunken in a bit as well. And he said, like, reptiles, it's very common for them to have one eye that can be a bit smaller or a bit sunken in. Like, this is something he will see a lot of, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's more cosmetic. It's just something that sometimes happens. But the eye doesn't need to be removed. It doesn't need treatment. It's just how it is. Now, neither of them could tell me what the patch over the eye was. I from googling it obviously that's what you do when you do <laughs> you get no answers from the vets and you're like I'm just gonna google this um to me it looks similar to some images I saw of reptiles with corneal dystrophy but I would have hoped that they would have picked up on this um so for now her eye is how it is I think the white patch is getting slightly bigger every year like a little bit so I don't know what that means for the future and that's why I originally took her to the vets because I was like if this keeps getting worse should we remove it now rather than her really struggling with one eye because to me I imagine it like if you wear contact lenses I'm short-sighted okay so if I take out one contact lens one side of my eye is completely blurry and that's what I imagine it's like for her and I'm worried it will get worse but as I said both the vet and the reptiles vet said there's no problem we'll leave it as it is so you know I've got to take their advice one thing you may notice as well when I have Minnie out in videos um, is that she licks her eye a lot and this is because when she's asleep the eye kind of I don't know if it just gets dry or the eyelid gets stuck together but when I pick her up and she's walking around on my hands or I'm about to feed her she needs that other eye so that's why she keeps licking it to open it but sometimes I'll pop a drop of saline in her eye just to help her out because saline is better than water it's less harsh I actually use the one I use for my contact lenses as it's like 100% saline nothing added no medicine or anything so it just soothes the eye and keeps it clean and opens it up for her and it's perfectly fine if she licks it but um but yeah that's that's what's up with her eye and that's how we deal with it it's more like a deformity rather than a condition so it's nothing really we can do it's really more cosmetic that just happens to cause a few extra problems but I would urge you guys to be vigilant with your reptiles eye health. Um, I see photokeratoconjunctivitis quite often. Like someone will post a picture of their bearded dragon and these eyes are all puffed up. And they, they're so used to seeing their bearded dragon like that they don't even realise it could be caused by the coil lamp that they're using. I think photokeratoconjunctivitis can be caused by a range of things but that is one of them. And I did do a video on that before um but yeah uh i hope this has cleared things up before i go i did just want to give a massive shout out to the patrons of this channel nathan leon laura jezebel april jonathan sarah sabrina tracy kim orgel emily n emily l charlie tess megan and everyone else who supports me over there
But yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I make new videos every four days. Most on the Leopard Gecko, but we get the odd different one here and there. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and goodbye.